And then just quickly looking at the lower digestive tract, the carnivore colon, again, straight, smooth, because whatever residue reaches uh, this point, there's no more nutrition to be gained. It can only start to putrefy and rot inside the body. So they want to get it out of, the body, out of their body as, long, as quickly as possible. Um, and so they don't need a large storage capacity. Contrast that with the plant eaters. Because fiber can be broken down by uh, bacteria into a lot of bioactive uh, and energy-containing compounds, they have this sacculated uh, structure to their colon, which increases its capacity. It's much longer and does a lot of things, uh, such as uh, 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 vitamin production, creating short-chain fatty acids, which uh, uh, change um, physiology. It enhances uh, the activity of a variety of plant compounds and water absorption. All right, now let's move on to humans. Well, the main thing uh, that we need to understand is that humans have the palate preferences and importantly, psychology of an herbivore. We naturally love and crave the taste, textures, colors, and variety of plant foods. So we are not only herbivores by our anatomy and physiology, but also our psychology. Because in order to survive in nature, you not only have to be able to procure whatever food you're supposed to eat, but you also have to be attracted to it. And that's why we are attracted to bright colors. We are attracted to smooth, rounded shapes. We're attracted to things that are firm and things that taste like plants. Now, this is a far side cartoon. It says, Rusty makes his move. Notice he's got a can of dog breath. Well, <laughs> we see that carnivores will often, when they find a dead, rotting carcass, they will go roll in it and then go back to their pack mates. Why do they do that? Because they are showing their pack mates, hey, I know where food is. If you want to have something to eat, you need to hang out with me. So the question is, if we're natural flesh eaters, why don't we arrive at our date's door wearing scraps of meat and smelling like rotten flesh rather than flowers and fruit? You know, why don't we make our perfumes and colognes to say, oh, uh, instead of, you know, uh, 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 Chanel number no. five, we could have like slaughterhouse number no. four or rotting carcass, you know, number no. six. It's because our brain is telling us what it wants. It wants the plant compounds. That's why we like to smell like plant compounds. Furthermore, we are so in love and so uh, 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 in need of plants that we create all of these artificial product products to make our homes actually smell like plants. And that's because human beings developed as a species dependent on flowering plants. That is why flowering plants are so important to us, because we are a plant and fruit eating species. And our brain knows that if we are ingesting plants, if we are around plants, we will be healthier and live longer. And guess what? That's exactly what science is telling us. But it actually gets even more interesting than that. Because in order to make animal tissue uh, acceptable, we have to disguise it to play tricks on our mind. Because we don't like it in its natural form. So we try to make it look like plants. Look at that. You got a pear and a lamb chop, apples and meatballs. Bananas and sausages, celery and bacon, <laughs> a squash and a drumstick. We have to change the way animal tissue looks to make it acceptable, but not just the way it looks, but also the way it tastes and smells. So even things like sushi, we chop it so that it looks like raw fruit. We are doing this so that we will not react with a disgust response. By the way, these slides are taken from a lecture called Meat Eating and Mind Games. You can find it on YouTube. Just go to YouTube, type in Dr. Milton Mills, Meat Eating and Mind Games, and the lecture will come up. The uh, first uh, slide about uh, our, uh, plant, our, our uh, love of flowering plants comes from a lecture of mine called Flowers in the Human Intellect, how uh, uh, plants helped us develop as a species. That lecture is not online. 